these scriptures mean or you'll be in bondage to this lie thinking that you've gone into the kingdom in a carnal, double-minded state. Like all these preachers that call themselves the chief of sinners and the Romans wretch and liars and black ball God and all the other things, that these horrible things these guys say all day long. That's not what the scriptures teach. They don't teach anything of the sort that you sin every day against God. So if you live according to these passions and desires, fulfilling them in your selfishness, your greed, and your lust, then you're going to die. Now what's that mean? What's that death mean? Physical death? No. It's everybody, the flesh is going to die physically. Like we said, the mortal body, it, it, it deteriorates daily, as we've seen in that, in that Corinthians passage. Now what's he talking about here? He's talking about the spirit in you will die. See, the spirit in you, the life in you, the light of God, the spirit, small, small s, spirit, not the Holy Spirit, but the light, that play, the light of conscience that God placed into every man, as it declares in John chapter 1, that that light was placed into every man, that spirit is going to die. See, in the new birth, it was quickened back to life. It was, he said, he'll quicken your mortal bodies quicken that spirit so it's back in communication with God so the eyes of the understanding are open to the truth of God so you can be led by the Holy Spirit into all truth not in, in this you're led into error constantly that's why people they study their Bibles they go to church they go to Bible studies they go to the singing groups and the concerts and in the in the seminars and they read books and they get DVDs and all the material and the study material and the commentaries and on and on and on. They never get anywhere, ever learning, but never able to come to a knowledge of the truth. Why? Because they're trapped in this, this double-mindedness that, that was never shed off in the new birth. Their new birth was come up and receive Jesus in your sins and he'll forgive you. Not a reconciliation with God, not a setting down with God a clearing of wrongdoing and a purification process that takes place in repentance. No, that didn't happen. So the spirit within you dies. It returns to a state before before your regeneration. And the Holy Spirit, if, if you did have the Holy Spirit, He departs. He departs because you're given up. Like the Bible says, He'll give you up to your vile passions. He'll give you over. You'll, you'll reach a state where it's impossible for you to repent. Why is it impossible? Not because you, you've committed a sin that God can't forgive. No, I don't think that's what it means. I think it means you've reached a state where you can't even see your need to repent. That's what Hebrews chapter 6 is talking about, crucifying him afresh. See, you're treating the blood of Christ like the blood of animals. It can't purge away sin. All it does is cover. That's all the blood of animals did. It covered the sin temporarily. Not presumptuous sin, but you know, understand that. But nevertheless, only temporarily. So that's how you're treating it when you sin willfully against your knowledge of the truth. Trample the blood. Insult the spirit of grace. But see, you're taught that you can do that with impunity and still inherit the kingdom. So what happens? You become hardened. Your heart, the deceitfulness of sin, puts a bitter root in your heart and hardens your heart to the truth. And then you're given up. See, remember in Romans 1, you suppress the truth first. Then you exchange the truth of God for a lie. Then you bow down to the image. Then what? Then God gives you up, gives you over, finally to a reprobate mind. So you can be in this death in a reprobate mind, thinking you're worshiping God with a form of godliness, with no power of godliness in your life. That's the horrible part of this. There's so many people like this that you run across. They think everybody's going to heaven and everything's peachy keen in the church. It's just a wonderful, happy time. And when they close their eyes in this life, it's going to be the, the biggest shock that they, the, the universe can put upon them. Because nobody, there's hardly nobody preaching the truth except for a few people on the Internet. But you can find the truth in the Scriptures if you dig for it. So that's what it means about what's going to happen if you live according to the flesh. 
See, there's no carnal Christians. There's no double-minded Christians, okay? There's no people, there's no light and darkness abiding together. Remember, Jesus said, if the light in you is dark, how great is that darkness? See, there's no abiding together here. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 6, the last few verses where he says, Come out from among them and be ye separate. Touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Then it goes on to in chapter 7, verse 1, to lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and perfect holiness in the fear of God. Having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves of all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and perfect holiness in the fear of God. What fear of God? What fear of God is there when you're told a thousand times by a hundred thousand preachers that you can inherit the kingdom in that condition? Double-minded, carnal. See, there isn't. There isn't any fear of God. Okay, in Romans chapter 8, we see there's no condemnation for those that are in Christ who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Now, if you wonder, well, that's in italics, and that wasn't contained in verse 1, and some of the versions leave it out. Well, nevertheless, it's in verse 4. And in verse 4, he says that he condemns sin in the flesh, that the righteous requirements of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. There it is. There it is. It, th that's, that's what Paul said. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the flesh. Those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death. Death to that Spirit, to the Spirit of man within you. It's going to die, return to that state of death, darkness, the eyes of the understanding closed to the truth. You can no longer be led into truth. That's the problem with you folks in the church. You get led into error, you go into this death, you still think you're in the light, just like Jesus said in Matthew 6. The light in you, you think, the, the darkness in you, you think is light. And then you're led further and further and further into error. And then pretty soon somebody comes along and gives you the truth and you hate their guts. You lash out against them like they're your worst enemy and cut yourself off from that person. That's what happens to be when you're carnally minded. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace with the light and the spirit of truth leading you into more truth. The carnal mind is entity against God. It's not subject to the law of God. It can't be. Nor indeed can it be. So those that are in the flesh, the passions and desires of the flesh, he means, not the flesh, can't possibly mean in the mortal flesh. Otherwise, nobody could please God. See, it's got to be, he's got to mean the passions and desire, because there's only one word for flesh, sarks. So those that are in the sarks can't please God. He means the passions and desires thereof. But you are not in the flesh, you're not in those passions and desires, subject to them, submitting yourself to them, presenting your members as, as instruments of sin, but as instruments of righteousness, as Romans 6 says. You're in the Spirit, the, the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, guiding and directing your path if you're in Christ. That's how you can tell. It's, 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 there, there's no mystery about whether or not you're led by the Spirit here. There's no great mystery about it. If you're living in sin, in carnality, in double-mindedness, you're, you're the only person you're fooling is yourself. You may, well, you may think you're putting up a good show, that you're a Christian and everybody thinks you're a Christian. It doesn't make any difference what they think. You're going to the one that's going to step into eternity. You're the one that's going to face God at the judgment seat. And Jesus Christ at the judgment seat. What Paul say? Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. We all must appear before the judgment seat. What possible me reason would there be to say the terror of the Lord that I persuade men with all my heart and might and urgency if there was no possibility of that judgment making any eternal difference to the outcome of your salvation? You see how foolish that is? They tell you you're going to lose rewards, you're going to lose fellowship. Where does it say that stuff? Where does it say that stuff? It doesn't. So, living in the flesh. Now, if indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you, as I just pointed out. If anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, the Holy Spirit, he doesn't belong. He's none of his. And if the Spirit, if Christ is in you, then the body is dead because of sin. As he pointed out, all the way back from Romans 7, that the body is dead. You died to sin. You died to the law. 
which, which, was, which was the law, demanded death. You had to die and be resurrected in the newness of life with Christ so that the righteous requirements of that law could be fulfilled in you, walking in the Spirit. But the Spirit's alive because of righteousness. Now, if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He who raised Christ from the, from the dead, again, Romans 8, 11, will also give life to your, what? Mortal body. So there again, it's got to be, see, in the flesh, in the mortal body, can't possibly mean that, you know, I can't please God, like, like they teach in Romans 7. Everybody's the, the Romans wretch, walking around the chief of sinners, the, the filthy lion, cheat, uh, low life, like uh, Ed Young likes to talk about all the time, and all these other preachers. Couldn't possibly mean that. He's talking about the passions and desires of the flesh. See, because sin is not something dwelling in you. It's not a substance. It's a moral choice that you made. Your choice to follow after the Spirit, the truth, if He's truly inside you, and not the passions and desires of the flesh. Now, the natural desires of the flesh are not sinful of themselves. Understand this. See, naturally, in a natural state, we hunger, we thirst, we grow tired, weary, we have affections, we experience anger and uh, loneliness and fear and worry and all those things. Now, of course, these things can become sin and destroy us if we indulge them, if we allow them to get us into that state of indulgence and selfish, wrapped up in selfishness. Just as our natural need for refreshment